I'm having flashbacks to when I was at school and my mum would say, you can't go out and play until you've done all your homework. <sighs> Hello YouTubes. In case you missed the last video, this is three boxes of train stuff kindly donated by my new neighbour and best friend, Rick. But I can't dive into it properly until, uh, as I said before, I do my homework. So what is my homework? I need to finish laying my track. Namely, there should be a track going along here under this mountain station. This will be a tunnel. Train, uh, sorry, track along here. We'll come round here and go into sidings, industrial area, etc, etc, etc. This section here needs to be finished. This section here goes along here. Get one small section there. I don't know why I didn't finish that one. But as I say, I need to get all this track down before I can start doing scenery and find out exactly what's in those boxes. So let's spend some time, grab some track, throw it in that general area and see what works. A bit too busy. We need a balance of enough sidings and industry. If it's all just track then there's no room to put industry therefore what's the point of the track being there? So I want enough track to basically house two or three goods wagons or maybe a passenger train that can just sit there and I can use it wherever I want. The problem I've got is all the space on the layout is all the space I have. I don't have any sneaky little backroom siding areas. So I will have to decide on what's going to live in the track and what will be on shelves that I can change. It's a pain to change over an entire railway train system, but a wee bit limited in space. Yes, I know there's plenty of people out there that have got a lot less space than me and I feel for you, but this is the space I've got. So I need to make it work. It's got to balance out. It's got to be more than just track and trains. I want scenery, I want industry, and I want functionality. I, I need to go back to the drawing board, get a bit of paper, start drawing stuff out. This lane or throwing track at the layout, it just isn't working. So I'll see you in a minute or ten. So I went to bed, I gave up, and as always happens when you go to bed, you lie there, you think, you can't sleep, lots of ideas swirling about, and I think I've come up with a solution. This section here is going to be a kind of hillside train station, if you can see how that works. And under, say, underneath will be a tunnel for this line here to go under and round to the industrial area. However. There's nothing to stop me from adding an extra line or two in the tunnel and use that as storage. As long as I've got access, maybe in the middle or at either end, in case they have a derailment, then that is quite a lot of space to store like your containers, your goods trains, whatever, without taking up valuable space on the actual working part of the layout. So I think, I mean, I've got plenty of points to do that with. As long as I lay the track well and there's good, good access, I think that's feasible. Tunnel entrance there, tunnel exit here, all that space, brilliant. And the other thing I thought of was, this incline here is long and boring. How about I extend it out wide enough for another siding? 
So it would go from a bit here all the way down to there. I don't want to start it right at the curve, so maybe start it there. So from there to there could be another siding. So this would be a hill coming out and then down. So underneath that hill can be another big long line of storage for a goods vehicle or whatever. That means I don't need all these sidings because I'm going to have an extra one there and two under there for storage. So that's going to free up a lot more space for scenery and roads and buildings, industry, whatever. I think that's going to work. And I'm glad I'm going down this route because you see that corner up there? There's always some weird derailment thing going on just as it gets to the top. Let me show you why that's happening. Because I'm a bit of a short ass, I can only reach round to there with my face to see if this lines up. It looks fine from here. But check out this joint if you look at it from a bird's eye view. That's a horrible little twist. The track's coming in here and then going that way. So what I need to do is cut about an inch of track of the curve away that way so that when it comes round this way it's going straight rather than coming in and then going that way. So I'm glad I discovered that. And as I say, I will probably start the siding about four inches down and then it'll come in here. It's all about trial and error. Well, mostly error in my case. But I think this is going to work. Okay, I obviously need to clear all that track up again and start laying track under the tunnel, see if it's all going to work. I don't see why it wouldn't. Change of plan again. I decided that having turnouts in a tunnel was a really silly idea. Your, tra your track would have to be perfectly aligned, limited access, just forget that idea. Also, I just can't be bothered building another shelf over there and another tunnel just to hide this one track. Too much work. I want to get on with the rest of the layout, scenery, running trains. So here's what I've come up with for the industrial side. I'll talk about the access to it in the middle, but there's two main access points. 
can either come in this way and these aren't quite wide in, or not quite long enough for goods wagons so this will probably be where my locos can live so I'll get enough room for one two three four five six maybe seven locos sitting there ready to get used obviously to get over to the goods area is a wee bit of a, a chore because it has to come away around here this side here will be for the longer goods wagons storage a little bit of shunting there's going to be a little bit of access not access a bit of extra rail here so a shunter could live there locomotive can pull the goods in the loco can uncouple any of these and the shunter can move stuff about back and forward between them when it's ready to go it can come out this way it can either go all the way along under the tunnel and get access way around there to the main line or it can take a shortcut here and go over here to the main line nope i'm lying it can't go into the main line from here it can only get to this lake access area so yeah it would have to go that way to get to the main line yeah i don't know i just wanted that a wee bit different i've got this diamond here the only way for this area if there's a goods vehicle there to get onto the main line it would have to come along here either stop here reverse up there come back down here or go way up there but you know what that's part of the fun is making it a bit more complex this bit's a bit of a spaghetti junction if you know what i mean that's a place in england by the way it's a motorway interchange so that's where i'm at that is the future track design that I'm going with and I could change it and adjust it forever but I just want to get on with things so I am going to get with the fixing down of track and making sure it all runs which obviously I'm doing as we go along with my chassis. I was using this Delaware and Hudson basically if that can get around the track anything will but it's going to struggle with all this shenanigans so the Hudson Delaware and Hudson Passenger train will just really be on the, the main loop and it will stop at this station when I'm not using it. Uh, also, I've adjusted this. If you remember correctly, this had one of these little bridges there and then I was going to add some of these girder bridge parts for this area. But I've done away with that because it just kind of gets in the way, you know. Oh, also, I had to lower this by quarter of an inch all the way around it was just too high it was coming around the curve and then start to go down there was a bit of a hump here so it's a bit more of a transition there obviously i'm going to be having lots of goods vehicles coming this way to go onto the main line and the last thing i want is derailment issues there so that's a wee bit lower printed off some more of these painted them they'll get stuck to the side i'll probably paint these silver and weather them a bit more they're a wee bit too dark so I hope that all makes sense. Let me get on with the laying of track, gluing it down or tacking it down, because once all the track's down, we can finally move on to the hard wiring. See you shortly. It's been a while. This is my 15th coffee. It is currently 4.08 a.m. You know what it's like? When you get really into something, you want to get it working before you go to bed and give up. I think it's working. Let me give you a quick tour and then we'll do some testing, okay? This section is the same as it was before. This section's the same, but I did change it a wee bit here. I did have another track going over, joining that track over there, but it was just getting a bit chaotic. And remember, I want to have a good balance of train running and scenery and just don't want to overcrowd it so this section around here obviously it splits here this will go to the train yard for keeping the locos and i've tried to keep it all as nice and straight as possible so as i said before there's enough room for a couple of locos there a couple there one there one at the end goods wagons on the far side i've just made enough room for three sets of goods wagons and there's enough room for about six on each so 18 that's more than i'll ever need in one train <sighs> it 
it looks a wee bit bare now, but that's okay. Remember, we're going to be filling it. This will be the the sort of industrial town area, and then there'll be a sort of distribution centre and maybe some industry and a train maintenance yard around here. Maybe. Anyway, let's see if it works. And of course, I'm going to be trying Big Blue, six axle. If he go, if he gets round it, then all my four axles will get round it, no problem at all. So. Let's give it a shot. Obviously, this guy, he will never see the goods area. He just falls off. Right, let's give him a shot. Let's test the engine yard first. We're going to head for this siding here. So we need to go this way at this junction. Otherwise, we'll end up in the goods yard. Coming up ahead, we need to take the left turn out. He does a bit of a squiggle here, but he seems to get over it okay. Losing a bit of power because we're all we're running off of one tiny set of wires to run this whole track. So far so good. So while we're here, we'll make sure we can get into the other three. Two out of two. Three out of three. He's not a big fan of this style of turnouts. Maybe it's just because they're brand new and they've got too much paint on the frogs, I don't know. Right, let's see if we can go for four out of four. Excellent. Okay, next challenge is getting them over there. So this time we need to go left at this turn out to get to the goods area. I don't think you've seen this new section of track work yet actually. It's not bad. Slight incline here so the local slows down a wee bit. And it goes over this section much nicer now because I've lowered it a little bit. So we're going straight ahead. Now we could actually turn right here and get back onto the main line. And we could even get into the local yard here from that line. So this obviously will be a tunnel. And we're coming round to the goods area. So I've set the switches to go all the way near the wall. Again, these are new turnouts. Frogs are a bit noisy at the moment. But we're getting there. So that is one of three. Stop. Oh, that was close. Right, let's make sure we can get to the other two.
Fantastic. I know I don't look excited, but inside I'm jumping up and down with joy. Right, the next step then, I need to get it all hardwired. Now, obviously I'm just running DC at the moment, but if I'm clever, and I'm not, then I should be able to wire it in such a way that I'll be able to convert it to DCC once that's a thing for me. I've got one decoder and all the gubbins to run a DCC EX system. But that's further down the line. At the moment, I want to get it wired and then we can start in the scenery. And then I actually want to get this track ballasted, but I know you do that after you put the scenery in. Otherwise, you're trying to put scenery over ballast. So I need to wait a wee bit longer for the ballasting. But this is great. Um, I'm happy with this for now. I'm sure there's loads of different ways I could have done this, but with all the complications of collecting goods wagons, it makes it more interesting, right? That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for watching. I know I'm not uh, Mr. Personality at the moment, but it's like five in the morning. People are going to be starting to get up and I'll be just going to bed. See you soon. Bye for now.